Welcome friends to the 2023 Land Rover Discovery Review. This is the HSE R-Dynamic trim level and we have to talk about that because yes it's true this is a 2023 model year but if you go on Land Rover's website right now to build one they have really simplified their trim levels. Now you only have an S level as the base then you have the SE then you have the top trim level Metropolitan, which is all new for 2023. So as of right now, the equivalent trim level to what we're testing out here today would be the SE trim. Either way, the pricing is pretty much gonna be the same. The way that you see it here, this vehicle is $80,000. And when I spec one online, pretty similar to what we have here, the SE, that was also $80,000. The Metropolitan, that's going to run you between 83 and 85 grand. And, you know, that's really going to be up to you. When you're shopping in this class and category of vehicle, I'm assuming that you're a big baller. You got deep pockets and you can pretty much swing anything that's coming your way. <laughs> so you pretty much can just buy whatever you want. And the reason why I say that is because these Land Rover, Range Rover products and Porsche products for that matter, they are very difficult to come by. There's not much in stock and if you want to order a vehicle that's going to take pretty much a year and if you're just going to be shopping for something that's on the lot, you happen to find a Metropolitan, go ahead, just buy it. But I should explain to you what that Metropolitan is. Not only is it the fully loaded top trim level, but it's going to come with some slightly different styling features, uh, kind of different diamond cut wheels, as well as a unique titanium mesh interior trim. Plus you get all the features and options like the heads up display. That's something that you get as well as heated seats in all three rows because the Discovery is a three row vehicle as I will discuss in the interior segment. The other thing to note is the SE or this HSE, you have to get at least this trim level to option in the inline six engine, which is what we have here. This inline six engine produces 355 horsepower, 369 pounds feet of torque. It's mated to this eight speed automatic transmission and it also has a 48 volt mild hybrid system. This is the engine I recommend. And yes, it is expensive. It's going to be a little over $5,000 on top of the base SE trim level to get this inline six engine. Otherwise, the standard engine is a four cylinder turbo pushing out 296 horsepower. The S trim level, the base that only comes with the four cylinder, it does come decently equipped for 2023 with standard adaptive cruise control, standard front heated seats, and the 11.4 inch PV Pro uh, infotainment that comes standard with wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. That's also new for 2023. So there you have it for the introductions. I just covered the new trim levels and what's new for the 23 model years and availability. Now let's go ahead and let's transition over into the driving segment. Okay, as I mentioned before, we have here this inline six. Made it to that eight speed auto. This is definitely the engine that you want because this is so smooth, so silky. We're just in the comfort mode right now. You can slip it into a sport mode for the transmission, but it's really not necessary. This is no Canyon Carver, and I think most people understand that. Well, actually, it is a canyon carver. It literally climbs over canyons. Uh, that's one of the key elements with a Land Rover slash Range Rover product. I mean, this is a proper off-roader. I mean, just the way that you see it here with all-season tires and massive 22-inch wheels, this thing will climb mountains the way that you see it here. It has its own practical purposes. Let's say you live on a farm or something. It is nice to have a vehicle that is more capable than something else in its class. But yes, I do understand most of you are just going to valet park this in front of the Applebee's or jump a curb at Starbucks. That's the most amount of off-roading that most people are going to see purchasing this. You need to have a selling point and one of the selling points with a Land Rover Range Rover product is that off-road capabilities. 
uh, aside from its baller nature, right? Because another great attribute is how amazing this vehicle looks. Uh, the pull-up game is strong with this product. And to complete the driving feel of this, you have to get this inline six engine. It's a huge upgrade over to the four cylinders. Plus, it'll just make your discovery a little bit more desirable in the used car market since engines hold value better than options. The eight-speed gearbox in this discovery, it's really smooth. You can play with these paddle shifters if you want to. They're really nice metal paddle shifters. But the shifts are so soft, you know what I mean? It's not quick and snappy like the, uh, what do you call it, BMW X5 8-speed ZF. This is ultra smooth. But in a pinch, in case you're driving in a mountain or something, and you need to use the paddle shifters for engine braking purposes, this is totally fine. Very good. I don't mind it but for 99% of the time, the regular drive mode, the regular comfort mode does extremely well. Another huge plus point with this drivetrain is going to be how fuel efficient it is. This inline six will get 19 MPG in the city and 25 out of the highway. That is incredible considering the fact this Discovery weighs over 5,500 pounds. And this thing is built like a sprinter van. You know, the thing is so high up there. It's got a very unique and interesting look. And after all that, this thing can still pull off 19 city, 25 highway. Of course, you have to use premium fuel, but that's pretty great for a vehicle of this size and caliber. So it weighs as much as a tank and it can also tow a tank. No, I'm just joking, it can't quite tow a tank, but the towing figures are great at 8,200 pounds when equipped with the tow package like we have here. So those are all fine things, but let's talk about ride comfort and handling now. Okay, we have your 22 inch wheels wrapped in 285 wide tires in all four corners. So we've got a nice beefy tire set up here and we have really good grip. There's not an insane amount of body roll for your everyday drive. So when you take your casual left hand, right hand turns, nobody's flipping over onto themselves. Despite the top heavy looks of this Discovery, it doesn't feel very top heavy. In fact, Land Rover and Range Rover, they do a really good job with making sure their vehicles feel like they have a lower center of gravity than what their vehicles kind of look. Of course, an X5 or a Cayenne is more capable than this. For everyday driving, this is going to provide you the security and the reassured feeling that you need. Even at higher speeds, right on the highway, it's not being blown all over the place. But how's the ride quality? See, that's the main thing we have to address here because we have these massive 22 inch wheels and it actually does a great job in absorbing the larger bumps Okay, like railroad tracks, speed bumps, things of that nature. But it's the smaller bumps where the Discovery kind of struggles with. You have the slight frequency that enters into the cabin space through the bottom seat cushion and you kind of feel it inside of your tush, if you will. You kind of feel those, uh, those smaller bumps coming in. It's not terrible. It's not unrefined, really. I personally don't mind it, but just keep in mind vehicles in this class, like the GLE Benz, Audi Q7, BMW X5, these sorts of vehicles, they will absorb those smaller bumps and the larger bumps equally as well. That's really the only thing I notice about this Discovery. Over the smaller bumps, you just feel it a little bit more than you should. Granted, we are riding on the massive 22-inch wheels. You can get 21s on this that still look amazing and that's what I would personally recommend. So you got the looks and you get a slightly better ride quality over smaller bumps. You can take it up a notch and get the 20 inch wheels if you want, but I understand, you know, the, the swagger of these massive wheels is pretty nice 
Um, and if you happen to just find one at a dealership near you and it's got 22 inch wheels, it's not unrefined. You can do a test drive for yourself, of course. The point is, it's not gonna be a deal breaker. You know, this does have proper suspension architecture, multi-link in the front, multi-link in the rear. We do also have here the air suspension, but as I just described, it's not the type of air suspension that you would typically find on, you know, Mercedes S-Class, a Genesis G90, or something of that nature. It doesn't give you that cloud-like sensation, right? And keep in mind, part of the reason for that is because of the amazing off-road capability that this has to offer. It's in a class of its own in that regard, but even that's not a big deal. For me, the thing I noticed is this Discovery doesn't quite have that special sauce that a lot of the Range Rover and the Land Rover Defender product had. I tested a 2022 Defender last year and I loved driving that thing. I can't quite describe it to you. You're going to have to take my word for it. Products like the Range Rover Sport, the full-size Rover, and the Defender I tested last year, all of these vehicles, they have this unique driving quality to them that many people fall in love with. And this doesn't quite have it. It's not a big deal. I just thought I would mention that because this is an expensive product. You know, you can get a well-equipped Defender 110 model, the four door, for around 80, 90 grand as well. I personally think the Defender is one of the best value propositions in the JLR lineup because, in my opinion, the Defender does look a little bit cooler and it does have that special sauce while having a little bit more horsepower and torque actually compared to this Discovery model. But again, I understand it's all gonna depend on your availability and what you have in stock near you. You know, if there is a discovery at your local dealership in a spec that you like, go for it. You're not gonna be disappointed with this. It is a remarkably quiet machine, even out on the highway. There's not too much tire noise. There's not too much wind noise with this discovery. And we don't even have here double pane glass and it's still this quiet. Shockingly, I did notice that the Defender rode slightly better than this Discovery, but it just produced a little bit more wind noise. I didn't really mind that. The Defender just had amazing character. It just oozed a certain amount of charisma, and I really like that. So with that established, let's go ahead and let's transition over into this interior segment now. Okay, now that we are stopped, let's go ahead and let's talk about this interior space. In typical Land Rover, Range Rover fashion, this is a solid, well put together interior. We have a little over 6,500 miles and there is no creaking or rattling. I've tested Range Rover products with well over 150,000 miles and they still feel like this, quite frankly. I just wish that the reliability would match up with that interior <laughs> solidity, right? <laughs> and the longevity of the interior. I'll talk more about reliability, I suppose, towards the end of this video, but let's continue with this interior space. A huge highlight with this particular test model is this Meridian surround sound system. This is one of the best audio systems I have ever listened to. The clarity, the bass, it is fantastic. It's only like a $750 option, so I definitely recommend most people to get this. But for 2023, they have made the regular Meridian sound system as standard, even on the base models. We have here one touch automatic windows for all four windows. It's not double paint, like I mentioned before. You have these little goofy square buttons for your memory seats. I've always liked the way they've done that, you know. <laughs> it's a unique look. I don't mind it, but it's not like the elegant type of buttons that you find in other luxury cars. The material choices in here, it's quite interesting. We have this rubbery type of texture going all throughout this interior space for the armrest and some of the side materials here. Uh, very similar to that Defender I tested. This is nice 
durable, easy to clean, so I do appreciate that. And we have this sort of white and black interior with this test model and this white material up top here. It's really soft. It's not like your typical plush leather interior space. It's more ruggedized, durable materials, but they're soft and it's the perfect height for resting your elbow on like this you know let, let, me, let me demonstrate the perfect uh, driving position for this discovery okay you have your elbow right here on the windowsill and you have your wrist on the uh, on the 12 o'clock position that's how you whip this thing around do you understand no i'm just joking children always keep your hands at nine and seven anyway these doors feel really solid when you open and close them your seating position is pretty much perfect you can see out of this the side view mirrors do a great job getting in and out of this suv it's not too terrible you don't need a sidestep or anything for most people i, I think you should be okay with this i am five foot eleven you know you got plenty of headroom in here after all this thing is as tall as a sprinter van i'm just joking i don't think it's quite that tall but you get the idea it's a more tall ish shape we have the standard 11.4 inch pivi pro infotainment and i do like using it it's clean it's elegant looks nice we also have the wireless apple carplay and wireless android auto for 2023 and you can certainly poke around in this infotainment and find all of your off-road menus right your wade sensing you can see uh, how deep you are in the water and <laughs> you can see your driving style your all-wheel drive controls your four-wheel drive systems and all this good stuff right your slope assist because you're going to be using that uh, when you're shopping at nordstrom right the point is it's an elegant screen it's relatively easy to use i like the way that it's implemented it's very clean in its design it's not stuck on top here like a like a tablet or something the climate control it's so elegantly implemented as well one of my most favorite attributes of JLR products, you have this minimalistic, you just pull and push on these knobs to access your fan speed, your temperature, and your heated slash cooled seats, because we do also have cooled seats with this model that we are testing. And you sort of have these haptic feedback buttons for your air recirculation and a few other climate buttons, which is fine, I don't mind that. And you press this physical button on top here, and you have a pretty nice storage space but i don't like the fact that this climate portion is finished in gloss black plastic this is attracting a lot of dust particles which is not cool you also have a fantastic gauge cluster here which is great once you have it programmed the way that you want it because you have these steering wheel controls here and that's fine but it's really slow to react for the gauge cluster takes a while for everything to load up but once you have everything set up the way that you want it it's a really great gauge cluster screen it looks nice and the information that it shows well it's the information that you want to see because you've configured it right once again got a nice size steering wheel here with some uh, metal inserts or it could be plastic whatever but i do know that these uh, paddle shifters are metal and you know as i mentioned in the driving segment it is fun to use. Got your automatic headlights, your automatic windshield wipers. We also have a wireless charging pad here as well and it does work properly. And you also have another section right here next to the wireless charger where you can place another cell phone if you so choose. Center console here where you have the gear shifter and your various mode selectors. I wish this portion was made of this matte wood material. I don't know why they're using this plastic material in the center here this would have been a great opportunity to have that wood trim similar to the volvo products the only other real con i have to mention is the auto stop start it does not remember that you wanted that system off you always have to turn it off when you start the vehicle for the first time you always had to go into this menu go into your vehicle settings and turn off the auto stop start i wish the vehicle would remember that you wanted it off but you know it is what it is you got two cup holders here you have a massive armrest which is fantastic and you also have a secondary compartment in there where you can place wallets and things of that nature you also have two glove boxes in here press this button on top and you have one section there where you can place a few things and the actual glove box itself is down below and you can take the books out of it and you have a decent amount of space there as well we have two sunroofs here it's not exactly a pano roof it's just kind of split between the two sunroofs seats look amazing they have a great cushion on the back and they have 
probably the most amount of lumbar support I have ever seen out of any car seat ever. <laughs> it is so much. So if you suffer from lower back issues, you're really gonna love these seats. Let's go ahead and let's transition into the rear seats now. You have a decent amount of space back there. It's not the biggest vehicle in its segment, but it's okay. Primarily because you have this plastic backing here on the front seat, so that kind of digs into the into the shins of the rear passengers. You also have your own climate control to play with back there, as well as heated seats. This vehicle does not have rear sunshades, which is really annoying. Any vehicle over $50,000 should come with rear sunshades, but we don't have it here. The rear seats, they are electronically adjustable in the way that you recline them. You can also uh, pull on that physical lever down below so you can pull the seats forward and back as you please. And this is a three row vehicle. We have a third row seat, but honestly, I think most people are just gonna use this as a big two row vehicle because the trunk is massive with those third row seats folded down. You can fit just about anything that you need. The spare tire is located underneath the vehicle. So storage in this, not a problem, but it is nice to have those third row seats in a pinch because I can actually fit back there. You know, again, because of that raised uh, roof line of the Discovery, I can be five foot 11 and I can fit in the third row seats of this product. So the packaging of this vehicle is great. You know, I'm an adult fitting in the third row, that's proper. But the main issue I've noticed is accessing the third row seats. It is a bit of a pain with this vehicle. First of all, you have to have the vehicle turned on to move the second row seats electronically forward and back. That's something you have to keep in mind. And once you do have the vehicle turned on, it's just, again, sort of a pain to climb back there if you're an adult. And finally, if you got that Metropolitan trim level, you can get the heated third row seats as well. Overall, nice practical vehicle, great interior space, good technology, looks nice, fantastic audio, comfortable seats, all that good stuff. Let's go ahead and let's transition over into the conclusion segment now. Okay, concluding thoughts on the Discovery. Overall, I am a pretty big fan of this vehicle. I know I said in the driving segment, it doesn't quite have that signature special sauce that some of the other JLR products have. It's still a great driving machine, nothing wrong with it. Plus it's super baller, right? Everyone is looking, staring at this vehicle when I roll around in it because people, like they idolize this brand. This is everyone's like, ultimate dream SUV, but it's expensive. The way that you see it here, it's $80,000. You can get well-equipped uh, BMW X5s, Audi Q7s, Mercedes GLEs for a lot less money. You can get them for under 75 grand, not to mention vehicles like the BMW X5, the new one, right? The 2024 LCI and the Audi Q7, you can get some great discounts because I am partnered with Auto Companion. They are offering 7% off MSRP on vehicles like the Audi Q7 and over 8% off MSRP on a 2024 X5 BMW. And you can also get manufacturer incentives on top of that. Like in some cases you lease the vehicle, Audi or BMW, they'll give you a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars incentives on top of the discount. So you're getting almost 10 grand off MSRP on those types of vehicles. And they cost less to begin with compared to these uh, Land Rover, Range Rover products. And yeah, Auto Companion does have JLR products as well, but they're mostly gonna be at MSRP and you're going to have to order them, which again can take upwards of a year. So if you don't mind waiting, you wanna get the vehicle that you want and you don't wanna play with any dealer games, you can hit up Auto Companion for a JLR order. But I get it, this isn't completely about value. Um, this is a dream car for many people and if you want to buy into this brand a Range Rover Sport and the full-size Rover Those are some of the best products, but they come at a steep price six-cylinder Range Rover Sport That's gonna be around a hundred grand The full-size Rovers that's around hundred and fifty the best value proposition. Like I said before, it's the Defender quite frankly 
85, 90,000 dollars. You buy into that, you can get the four door inline six engine. It's got a little bit more horsepower and torque than this Discovery, and it just looks amazing as well. So you're kind of undercutting the big Range Rover products and you're still getting a cool vehicle. If there's not a Defender near where you live, you can get the Discovery for sure. There's also the Discovery Sport. That's a totally different vehicle. That's like their entry level product. Okay, that's like a $50,000 SUV. Uh, that's also, you know, the easiest way that you can buy into this. I would probably recommend going with that over the Velar. I know the Velar looks amazing, but it's not the best value in the Range Rover lineup. It's like 70 grand for the four cylinder models for a well equipped one, and it's like 80 grand when you get the six cylinder Velars. So I think compared to that, going with the Discovery like this or the Defender is a better value proposition. Anyway, I hope that this video helped. I know it was super long, but there's a lot of details I wanted to cover, and it's an expensive vehicle. And uh, there's a bit of confusion in the Range Rover lineup, right? So I want to clarify that and clarify some of the new changes for 2023 with the Discovery. Since they did switch around the trim levels, we now have the S, the SE, and the Metropolitan. You know, going with the SE or the Metropolitan is what I recommend with the Discovery. It's a dream car for many, but just keep in mind, this company does have a reputation for not the best reliability in the world. I'm in this industry, I test and I review vehicles, and I'm around a lot of people, right? Dealerships, things of that nature, and I hear a lot of horror stories from owners, people in the comment section. These vehicles do have a tendency to break down, even in my personal experience with this brand you know testing some of these vehicles i remember that defender i tested last year it literally just stopped <laughs> at a red light and it wasn't the auto stop started like the whole vehicle just shut off for no reason and actually a few other people had that experience and one gentleman oh man he had a defender and his suv was in the shop for over a month or two you know that's not cool right you pay all this money. I wish this company would get it together. That's a lot of the stories that I've personally heard. Some people in the comment section have said they've had no issues with their JLR products. So it's kind of all over the place. Just know that this company doesn't have the best reputation for reliability. But if you love it and you got deep pockets, go for it. It's a cool brand. I do like their products. So thanks again for watching. If you want to support the channel, you can pick up some merch. And you can also like and subscribe as well. It will mean a lot to me. Thank you. My next video is on the end screen here. Click on it and I will see you there.